It's Wednesday and it's video time. This is where we're at. Both fender skirts have been welded on. Very happy with both of them. Neither of them are warped. Uh, they look very nice. Joni will give you a little walk around them so you can take a look at them. Uh, the welds have been ground off on the face and a little bit on the edge, not too much. We didn't want to grind it all off because I like to keep the weld on. We got the fitment in the back, as if you can tell, that fitted in the back. The other one's welded on. And uh, we're hoping that you enjoyed that. Right now, where they're welded on and they're, and they're fitting really good, um, I am going to run some fiberglass on back on the edge of the fender and run some fiberglass on the edge of the, run, uh, the fender skirt and show you how I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to come in and mud it out right after that. And then I'm going to show you how I sand it off, just so you know. And, like, as I do this, the reason I, I, I've, I'm, I'm building, I build cars this way, you can have to imagine the time, take the time that it would take to bend that 90 on a shrinker and stretcher and make that fit back and come back over and try it, take it back off, put it back on, take it off, put it back on. You can imagine the time it would take. If you take notice on the videos as we're showing you, the time, I think is an hour and a half, we had one skinned and round rotted and fitting the fender in, in real time. So if you can do that, if you can just imagine that, if you can fit it, skin it in an hour and a half and have both on in a day and start mudding, um, imagine the time that you have saved. So when I'm welding the round rod to the car, that, that makes it easier for me to get it done as quick as possible and fit. So, you know, as I was saying that, like we're talking about, you know, someone said, why do you do it that way? It looks foolish to weld it to your car. Well, we, like, like I said, we, uh, we filmed for 14 months. Jolene figured it out on the board for us, actually. And this, is, and this is why I do it that way. And this is the way I have to do it to get it done. 12 cars, there's the name of the cars. It's 12 cars and 14 months of filming. 14 months at 30 days in a month is 420 days. 420 days divided by 12 cars equals 35. So, not saying every car is built on 35 days, that's not true. But on the average of 12 cars in 14 months, it's a car every 35 days. And as we do that, I have learned the fastest way for me to get it done. You know, if we are going to cut cars apart and put them back together and fabricate things like that, it has to be done in a quickly manner. And generally, that's what I go for because I, I enjoy trying to get faster and better at the same time. And I would hope that everybody else feels the same way that's in this business. I would hope. Um, yeah. The time for me, I, I, I would rather um, build a bunch of cars than a couple of cars, I guess. That's where I'm at. I'd rather build a bunch of cars than a couple of cars. But here we go. Here, I got some fiberglass filler right here. That's enough of blowing our own horn. <laughs> but like I'm trying to, you know, just explain. I just want to explain and give proof to the matter, <laughs> you know. If, if, you have, if, you have, if you have the pudding, you have the proof. And I do not call it bragging if it's the truth. <laughs> Does that make sense? So what I'm doing here is I'm just making this fiberglass real thin. And the reason I'm making it thin is because I want it to lay as flat as possible where I'm putting it. I want it to, I want it to, um, what can I say, flow in as nice as possible. I do not want it to be bulky and to have a bunch of extra mud that I have to take off. I will take off some of it, but I do not want, you know, if you know what I'm trying to say, I want to 
really flow in so there's not a bunch to take off. I'm going to put a little extra hardener than that because I'm going to show you as I'm doing it. So I want it to harden as I run back to get some more. It might be a big mistake because I might run my, run my stuff hard before I get it on there. But what I want to do is I want it to harden and then I can come back and get my mud on real quick and show you how it's done. Not make this video too long, just long enough. How's that? Just long enough. I'm going to tell you, whoever starts to learn how to mud, get it on, then play with it. Get it on and then play with it. I do not care if the fiberglass hits the, inner, the, the fender skirt, do not care, because I'm leaving them right on, I'm going to fill them together. This is just the fiberglass that I took out of the fender to weld it on when I mudded it up the first time. I really, you know, I, I really look at the inner, the fender skirt and I think, yeah, well, it looks pretty good. I could just fill the edge of it and probably get away with painting it. But to be honest with you, the day and age now, everything has to fit so good for everybody to be happy with it. If it did not fit like it was better than new, you're able to pick at it. And uh, with what I'm doing here, I'm cutting that down. A little bit, because everybody still picks. How's that? You know, you know what I'm trying to tell you. Now, I'm just going to run along there slowly, just slowly, and try to smooth that edge off so I do not have to grind it off. I do not want to grind that off. Not at all. Do not care if it's, wasn't ready for that, wasn't ready for that. I will not put any on that yet because I want to scratch that and clean that. I'm only going to put a little glass in the bottom because it's scratched. I should have had that scratched off before I started it. And I'll scratch it off when I take the glass off or rub the glass off. Put a little bit on the bottom. It's ground down here. It should stick nicely. I would not put it on where it's dark like that. I want to grind it all off, get it scratched up. It was a mistake on my behalf, not ready. Talking too much. Telling the truth. <laughs> now generally, what I would do is I would glass this one up. And then I would go glass the other one on the other side. But we're not going to do that because, we're not going to do that because, I'm scratched up there. I'm going to give it a second. My mistake, I should have had that metal scratched off before I even put that glass on there, but I went for the fender first. And this is what I'm going to do right quick. put that on there, you know that? This was ground there, I ground that and sanded it with this, with, a, with an 80. And the primer we have, I'm going to show you before the end of the video, but the primer we have, I sand that with an 80 so I could apply that and it'll stick to it, stick to it very nice. It seems to be harder when you sand it than the filler, 
But anyways, as I scratch this off, this is where this surface is going to be before I do this surface. need debris off it, try to clean up best we can. Scratch got good. Now, I'll continue on. I'm going to get a bigger squeegee. And uh, here we go. I'm going to use the better, I say the better, I guess the more expensive filler because I'm just going to apply probably a coat on it to fill it in together. Uh, I'm going to mix this up and I'll probably have to do another one to flood that. What I mean by flooded is, I'll show you. mix it up so there's no no difference in color that's how I mix it so there's no difference in color and all through it that's all no difference in color it's all mixed to me now I didn't put much fiberglass on that side it didn't really need that much in here where the fender was where I dug it out I wanted on the edge of the lip but as I do this Get it on. That's all been welded on the edge of that fender, that inner fender, so I know that that inner fender has to have fill on it to be fixed. And here goes another thing. As I put a bunch of filler on this fender skirt, you can imagine the time just a second, as I get it going, we'll talk about that. You can imagine the time I come over and put a little tiny bit on it here and there and just played with the surface, how long it would take. Or if you come in and just mud the whole thing out and then do what has to be done. That's where I'm at. I just come in and mud the whole thing out. some more we'll get her going here now the purpose of this game what I'm doing right here right now is want to get it on there as quick as possible so I can have one one playing field to sand I want the whole surface of that fender skirt and that fender where I repaired I want it filled all in one layer of body fill so I can sand it off as one flood. So if I was flooding something, flooding something or being flooded, I want it to flood to the more than it needs, and then I will take it down 
so it fits perfectly on the fender. And I know when to stop the flooding is because when I see the metal underneath, as soon as I start seeing the metal after I start sanding this, I know that I have thin enough. And this is what I'm playing on here. I do not care about using a lot of it because it's cheaper than time. Does that make sense? As I flood this, you know, if I'm over here filling it full of body fill, that means I'm going to spend less time over there mixing it. And this body fill is cheaper than time. Guarantee you. I've got the proof. It's over there on the chalkboard. <laughs> got the proof. It's over there on the chalkboard. Now, I see that they are, they are filled on the car. Yes, they are. You're going to ask yourself how I'm going to get them off. Well, what I do, when I take the rear end or the wheels off or take the rear end out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get up and behind there with a power, a little tiny hacksaw. And I know where they come together because I can see on the back side. And I will hacksaw that fender skirt off. It'll take me about... Couple, it'll probably take me a couple minutes to saw that off. I know where the washers are because I can see them on the other side. That does not bother me. So I'm going to fill it out or flood it out and then uh, cut them off. And then they will be done. They will fit the car. Um, they will be no messing around, no off and on, no off and on, no off and on, off and on. Um, Fender skirts were made on, stayed on, filled on, finished, and then taken off. That way there, I have assured myself fitment. Flooding in this way assures fitment and uh, the quickest way possible. I do not sand body fill to put body fill on top of body fill. If this body fill will not, if you can take this body fill and let it dry and put some more on it and, and get it apart, good for you. Because I do not sand the body fill. You don't have to sand the body fill. You cannot get that apart when you stick each other together. Do not get that apart. Now, I also as I put this on here, I want more on than I need. I want more on than I need. Remember that. I want more on than I need because if it's not there, I cannot use it. <laughs> I want more on than I can eat than I need at full, all times. And I'll explain why. Because body fill is cheaper than time. If I make little tiny coats and come over here and touch it, make little tiny coats and come over and touch it, it will take forever. So I just keep working, keep flooding it until I figure I have enough material. Right here in the back, I'm going to go for it again. I can tell there's sort of a mud puddle going on there, and that's where two panels are coming together. I'm going to 
put more in there. I'm going to sand it off, and I'll go from there. Wherever I hit metal first, well, then I'll stop. But I need a little bit more. I need a little bit more. I like more than not enough. <laughs> And body fill is cheaper than time. Um, generally, now I am going to run that off with this to show you how I use it. Um, I'm going to run it off and, and show you how I, I guess how I use that. When I come to, there's a mud puddle. After I'm done taking it off, that means I have to go back over there, mix up some more, put it in the mud puddle, and then recoat the whole thing again. I do not, I like to have it one playing surface. As I say, I do not want to put mud here, and mud there, and mud here, and mud there. If you, if you stop and think about it, this mud process, if you, if you see a car that's got Think about this for a second. You see a car that's got mud here, mud there, and mud there, and a little bit of mud there, and a little bit of mud there, and a little bit of mud there, where they are trying, where they are filling the dents, and you know, flattening it out, trying to use as less as possible. Now, think about this. As I've said that, where you put the body fill there has a chance to not look good. Where you put body fill there has a chance not to look good. Where you have put body fill there, you have a chance to not look good. When you have body fill there, you have a chance not to look good. Now you think about this. Cover the whole thing, sand it to one surface. What would you have to worry about if you did not hit the ocean floor? There's, there's, you know, there's a, a way of thinking about this thing. You can use less as possible, but make sure that you know every place that you fix, you have a chance of, of not looking good because you've, the ocean floor is all around the, the area that you have fixed. As I flood it out, I, I'm trying to get rid of that. And also I need it because this is, we're, we're making it. Um, just any little tiny bit like if, if the fender skirt sticks that, that much on the fender somewhere, we're gonna look, that's not going to look good on us, you know. We, this way here, we are trying to make it fit the best we can. And if it needs a little bit of auto body filler to get there, it does not bother me because there are no cars that are handmade and, and, and welded up that are not filled. So. That's the way I look at it. We're all doing it the same. So let's all be happy and build a car. So I'm just going to wait a little while, wait a little bit, and let this should dry off quite quicker. Maybe I'll take a hair gun to her or dryer and try to get it. Then I'll show you how I sand it off. I'll show you how to sand it off. Now, when we sand this off, with the whole surface covered like that, when we sand this off, we will know, or I will know, that it's going well because I'm going to hold this flat. I'm going to crisscross it and do it like I would a block. 
and I'm going to, that, the surface here will tell me whatever sanded is where the water is the highest, and wherever it's not sanded is where the water is the lowest. But we're still on a flood, so that means I can sand all the places I sand it down until I get to the lowest part of the flood, if that makes sense. The reason I'm doing this is just trying to get dry quicker so I can sand it. Like I said, these will come off. I will take the rear end of this car, I'm going to drop the rear end out of it, and I am going to take a hacksaw, a little hacksaw, and I will cut the fender skirts off. When I cut these fender skirts off, you and I will both know that they will fit. Won't they, baby? They'll fit! It's nice to even, even when I get to this point, I, like after I get to this point, I'm making this video, but let's face it, if we're, if we're working here, we're really running around trying to get the car made, I would be on the other side, mudding that side, why this side is drying. That's what I would be doing. I would not be here with this, drying it off. No. <laughs> Go to another spot, and uh, that's what we would do. And, but we're making a video, so we're going to show you. And remember, the mud is cheaper than time. <laughs> it's $20 a can, and the quicker you get her done, the quicker you can enjoy. Bear with us. I'll show you how you run this off. I'll just leave it like that for a second. I'm going to show the primer that we use. Did they bring any primer? Okay. This is the primer that I use. Um, I use it faithfully. It treats me right every time. I, you have to let it set for a day or two. We don't prime and then sand. That doesn't happen. You let it set for a day or two to really flash off, and it becomes harder than the filler. Uh, I don't mind. As we got filler on the fender here, we're going to prime that part, but there was primer on it from before, and, it was, and it's this stuff. As I sand it off with the 80 grit, and then you put the filler over top of it, I find that the filler, it, well, the filler is softer than that primer, and it sticks so well, and it says it's a polyester, no, it's a polyester primer, polyester means a plastic, plastic, polyester is all the same stuff, so it really bonds good together. Um, the lacquer primer, you, you would never dare, you would never dare put body filler over lacquer primer. This is a polyester primer with a hardener in it and it has that plastic polyester in it. So I quite enjoy uh, filling over top of that primer because it really works nice. All right, let's go for it. Or should I get a new pad on? I'll get a new pad on real quick. How's that? Just take a little walk around the car, baby. Go walk around the car or something. This is a, I'll show you when I rip the pad off the back, what it is. Ah, easy way to get the, the sand discs off your DAs is a heat gun. When I hit the fiberglass, I know I'm getting really close because the fiberglass is really thin on there. I thin it over, remember? So when I know I'm hitting the glass, I'm hitting it really thin. You can imagine, you can tell how thick things are when you, like, you know, when you're hitting metal. Some places it gathers. Let's get real. That's why we use it. So it is a, it's a 40 grit, and it's a Norton sandpaper on the 40 grit that I get on the 8, eight inch. This is an 8 inch DA, and that stands for Dual action, not drug addict. DA, drug addict. What's this? Just 
just want to harden that up a little bit more. All right, let's go for it. So what I, what I like doing is I like starting, and obviously you start in one spot. I like getting that spot sort of flat, and then I'd work myself around to flatten off everything else. for in the dash. Very dashing, eh? Turn. Doug rang a seat today. We've had all kinds of help today. As you can see, what I said, I flooded this out with filler. Where it's sanded is the highest part of the flood. So I'm trying to stay on the highest part of the flood to bring it down to the, where the lowest part of the flood is. And she's biting good. stuff up in here I'll round off by hand what I'll do is when I round up hand I don't want to cut it down this way because that cuts the fill off I go this way and I'll feather it off onto the fender right if I go this way onto the body fill I come on this way it's taking it off taking the, the body fill off if I go this way it feathers it so I'll go this way all the way around when I feather that all the way around the fender first I want to smooth it out here Metal showing. So you, can, you know how thin I am. Back down to that fender again, right there, eh? Just sort of got to get out of there, but I sort of got a little mud puddle right going. See 
if I can get it. Back to red metal right there. You can see how it's getting really thin there. We're on the metal, sort of got a little mud puddle going on there, maybe. If I can get that, I got a little bit there, just kind of gradually keep going. Got, I want to take some of it off of this while I'm trying to get that. this on and it's an issue and that's what we're masking is it taking too long
a lot of metal around this corner. You can see where it's going on there. showing here. So we're getting it down flat to the primer again. See how nice that stays on there? Feathers out nice. there that seems close I've got some fiberglass showing there on the edge of the fender going there it had not really got much there but I want to just take this off round her off Feathering it off, going the other way against it would be taking it off. As it goes this way, taking it off, and I feather it off, take some off, feather it off. Takes them off here. Down to the fiberglass. You can see where the fender and stuff was going on there, right where the fiberglass is, where I fixed the fender. So you know that we're doing good. say after that is when you become good become fast
Have a good Wednesday, everybody. When I cut this out, I guarantee it'll fit. <laughs>